Okay, 8.2, transformations of logarithmic functions. So once again, we're going to meet our friends A, B, H, and K. So how do they affect the graph of a logarithmic? So this is what it looks like when we apply those transformations. A goes here, B, H, and K. Okay, remember again, A is a vertical stretch. And when you stretch something vertically, what that maps to is the y values being stretched. Oops. Okay. B is always a horizontal stretch. When you stretch horizontally, you affect the x value, but you reflect it by 1 over b. Or sorry, you stretch it by 1 over b. h is horizontal. So when you move something horizontally, you affect its h value. Sorry, its x value. You move it up or down. H is a little tricky because its form is x minus h. So it was like x minus 5. H is positive 5. That's the tricky part for that one. And of course, k is a vertical shift. We should write shift for translation. Vertical. When you do something vertically, you take the point and you're going up vertical, so you're affecting its y value. Okay, so this is a good chart to refer to and to have open when you're doing these transformations. Okay, so we're going to use transformations to sketch the graph of y equals log 2x plus 9 plus 2. Okay. So a couple things we have to look at first of all is what values we have. Here I have an h and a k. So k is equal to positive 2. Here h is negative 9. The reason it's negative 9 is our form is always x minus h. Okay, And here I have x minus negative 9. That's why my h is negative 9. Okay, so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to draw my base graph of y equals log of 2 to the x. So a couple important points there, 1 and 0, 2 and 1 is another point, oops, I didn't put 1 and 0 in the right spot, 1, 0, 2, 1, uh, and then another point that I chose was 4, 2. Okay, and if you remember, the graph goes something like this, and then it starts growing, okay? It approaches this vertical asymptote right here. That's our vertical asymptote. Okay, that's what the graph looks like. Um, and now we're going to apply all the different uh, transformations. So we have an H and a K, so my point X, Y is going to map to x minus 9, y plus 2. So those values came from right here. Okay. If, why did I know to put those there? Well, I know that when I have a h translation, I go x plus h. When I have a k value, I go y plus k. That's why I knew to put those there. Okay. So I take my x value of 1, I subtract 9, and I get negative 8. I'm going to do this in another color. Okay, I take my y value of 0 and I add 2 to it. So negative 8 and 2. I have negative 1, 2, 8. Negative 8, positive 2. There's a point right there. So I'm taking this graph, I'm shifting it over, and then I'm shifting it up. 
my next point two and eight. Two minus nine is negative seven. One plus two is three. So negative seven and positive three. Okay. Four and two. Four minus nine is negative five. Two plus two is four. Five and four. Okay, so these are these same points. From here it's going to come very close and then it's going to start moving upward. Okay. <clears throat> So, a couple things about this new graph. It's domain. Normally, the domain is always x is greater than 0, but we've shifted that all the way over here. We've shifted it, in fact, 9 units over. We have shifted it, in other words, h units over. Okay, so my domain is all x, such that x is greater than negative 9. x is a member of the reals. My range, I could have any value of y, all y, such that y is a member of the reals. My asymptote, I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 9. Now my x and my y intercept, they're going to be hard to find without test values, so I won't do that now, but um, if you put in <clears throat> x equals 0, or y equals 0 into the original equation, you could do that to find those intercepts. Actually, I am going to do that. Okay, just as I was working this out, I noticed there's a typo. I didn't change the base here. This should still be 2. That was just a typo. I, the only way I can apply a transformation is if that has the same base. So quickly, it was just a copying error that I did. Okay, so I'm putting 0 in for y. I'm trying to find my x-intercept. So to solve this, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. Okay, I have this side written in, x, in logarithmic form, but I can write it in exponential form. So it's 2 to the power of negative 2 base power equals x plus 9. Okay, so now I need to solve for x, so that's 1 quarter equals x plus 9. Getting x by itself, I have negative 9 plus a quarter. So let's put 9 into 36 quarters plus 1 quarter. x equals negative 35 quarters. So that's what this point is, right here, is negative 34 quarters, just short of negative 9, which makes sense because we're approaching our asymptote at, at negative 9. So we said that was negative 35 quarters. We could do the same thing with the y-intercept. We could put x to be 0. and we could solve for this as well. Okay, I would need to subtract 2 from both sides. y minus 2 equals log 2 ninth. So this means 2 to the power of y minus 2 equals 9. So I would have to guess and check here. I would have to play with my calculator to see what, how I could express 9 as a base of 2. I know it's going to be a little more than 3 because 2 cubed is um, 8. So it's going to be a little more than 3. So... 3 minus 2, we should get a point similar to that. Okay, um, I won't get you to do these calculations so much. You'll probably guess and check that um, using Desmos. 
So don't worry too, too much about that. Okay, let's do another graph. We're going to use transformation to do y equals negative log 2, 2 plus x, 2x plus 6. So first of all, we need to put it in the proper form. y equals negative log 2. y equals negative log base 2, 2 bracket x plus 3. So now I have a b value. So I factored. Okay. So I have an a value of negative 1. I got that from right here. I have a b value of 2. And I have an h value of negative 3. Notice it was opposite of what we saw there. Okay, so we have to do a, b's before we can do h's. So we're going to start by mapping x, y. We're going to do our a value. a is going to affect the y. Okay, so the base function is log 2. y equals x log, y equals log 2x. Okay, so some key points from that graph is 1 and 0, 2 and 1, 4 and 2, and 8 and 3. Okay, so those are the points we're going to start with. 1 and 0, 2 and 1. Four and two, eight eight and three. Okay, so this graph looks something like this. That's my base graph that I'm applying the transformations to. So first of all, this is a flip, right? So we keep our x value the same, and we just do our negative y value. x value the same, negative y. So this point stayed the same. 2 becomes negative 1. This point also becomes flipped. Notice it's like a flip. Okay, and here we have 8 and negative 3. Every point gets flipped there. There's our first transformation. Now B. B means we compress X by 1 over B. So we take our original point. We've already applied this first transformation. So let's copy those points because we're, we're going from the first translation we already did. So we have X, Y. I'm just copying all these green points down. 1, 0, 2, negative 1, 4, negative 2, and 8, negative 3. Okay, and now we are applying the transformation of B. So it's x over 2 because my B value is 2 and y. So I go from one half, my y stays the same. I should do another color here. One half and zero. Okay. One and negative one. Two and negative two. Half of eight is four and negative three. Four and negative three. So you can see that graph has gotten compressed. It has been vertically stretched by a factor of one half. We don't have to draw each step of the way. I'm just trying to show you what happened. We could just do each of these steps and draw the final. Okay. 
Kathy. So we're taking those original points, the red points that we've already applied the transformations to. And just copying from the previous graph. Two, negative two, four, negative three. Okay, and now I'm doing my H translation. H was negative three. So what I'm doing is I am taking my point, my x value goes down by three, my y value stays the same. So one half minus three is minus 2.5 and zero. Okay, minus 2.5. And I have 1 and subtracting 3, so I get negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1. Okay, I go 2 minus 3. My y value stays the same. Negative 1, negative 2, and finally 4 minus 3 is 1, and my y value stays the same. 1 and negative 3, 1 and negative 3. So my final graph looks something that. So those are all the transformations that have happened. So if you need to find exact points, this is a good way to do it, is doing the translation using this information. Oops. This information right here. Okay, I was going to do another example, but I think 17 minutes is way too long. So we will do this example in class together.